Hi, this is Tim Grant, your 5-Minute QuickBooks professor. Today talking about the inventory settings in QuickBooks. But before I go there, let me show you a report that it's important you understand the concept of before we begin. First, I'm going to go to Reports, Inventory, and Inventory Stock Status by Item Report. Now, this is a pretty busy report, but I'll try to simplify a little bit. Basically, all you have is your items here on the left-hand side rolling down into your uh, assemblies. And here in the middle are four columns that are important, uh, starting with the on-hand quantities. These are, if I were to go out and count every item that we have in all of our warehouses, this is the number, these are the numbers that I would expect to see. So from that, we can take off of it any that are reserved for sales orders. So if our company uses sales orders before creating invoices, they would be marked on here and we could drill down and find which specific sales orders they belong to. The next column is for assemblies. So if I'm running a, a manufacturing or production environment, I may have a lot of my items reserved for assemblies that maybe I'm waiting on other parts to come in in order to complete the assemblies. And lastly, we have the available column, which is simply your on-hand quantities, less anything on sales orders, less any items reserved for assemblies, leaving what is available. So for example, my item here, the ANAD, my second item here, I have 11 on hand, none on sales orders, but I have 12 reserved for assemblies. Oh my gosh, I'm minus one. I need to order this item. And that's what the purpose of this report, inventory stock status item, is there to do, is to show you how that's set up. Now with that understanding, to see how the inventory items are uh, set up in preferences, we go to Edit, Preferences, and on the left-hand side, we tap on Items and Inventory. There's a My Preferences tab, although there are no choices uh, for the individuals there. But if I'm an administrator, I can click on Company Preferences. Now, my first choice is to show whether inv inventory and purchase orders are going to be used. They kind of work hand-in-hand -in, -hand in QuickBooks. You can't really have one without the other. Now there are times when you might use a purchase order for office supplies or something like that, but generally uh, uh, QuickBooks is set up to use those in combination. Our next choice is to warn about duplicate purchase order numbers, and that kind of makes sense. Uh, obviously, we don't want to have a duplicate of anything. Uh, it helps keep our records straight. Now, the next two choices we have refers to that report that I was just talking about. When calculating quantity available, remember that was our fourth column, for my inventory, deduct the quantity on sales orders, if I want to include that, if I'm a sales order type business, and my quantity reserved for pending builds, or simply what's reserved for assemblies. So I can uncheck these to drop them off that report uh, or include them, depending on what type of business I'm running. The next choice is warn if not enough to sell. And this is based on if the sell quantity exceeds a quantity available, which was our fourth column, and is usually the default for most businesses. There's also a choice, though, for quantity on hand if I want to use that, which would leave out the sales orders and the, the numbers reserved for pending builds. Now, I would really only use that if I had my suppliers very close and I wasn't really worried too much about the, uh, the quantities that I had and uh, ones that were reserved for assemblies or sales orders. Now, normally, I'm going to leave that set to my quantity available. There is a button here for advanced inventory settings, which refers to a subscription service that applies only to QuickBooks Enterprise and adds some functionality. Uh, gives clients the ability to add serial and lot numbers, FIFO costing, uh, multiple locations, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, that's, that option is not even available uh, in the QuickBooks Pro or Premier editions. So this is really more of an advertisement to encourage the uh, user to upgrade to QuickBooks Enterprise. And then the last choice we have is a unit of measure. I'm going to do a whole other session on how to run your units of measure, but basically, if you have a business where you're always selling in the same unit, for example, if you're purchasing in an each and you're stocking in an each and you're selling in an each, or if it's a gallon that you're purchasing and a gallon you're stocking and a gallon you're selling, then you could probably just get by with a single unit of measure. 
if you're instead, uh, like most companies, 95% of companies, you're purchasing in a carton and you're maybe stocking that unit, but you're selling in each or some combination thereof, then you're going to want to use multiple units per measure, uh, items per unit. So um, that's it. That's your basic inventory settings. We'll have another session on advanced inventory settings in another session. Um, but for now, uh, I appreciate your time. This is Tim Grant, your 5-Minute QuickBooks professor, thanking you for joining us.